Previously, we have found a transfer function for the water tank as If you remember, the output of the transfer function is the water level height. This can be measured by a sensor. This is the junction. And this is the error. The desired water level is set by the user. And the current water level is measured by the sensor. If we assume the sensor transfer function for now is 1, and the output as H, water level, then the difference between the desired water level and the existing water level height is what we call the error. This is on the assumption that the sensor transfer function is 1. Normally, the error is fed into a controller or a compensator, which is then fed perhaps to an actuator which is responsible for adjusting the flow rate to the plant. Now the plant here is our tank. So this is our tank. This is perhaps our actuator or solenoid valve. The actuator, perhaps transfer function, may have an input in voltage and an output in some sort of volumetric flow rate. Again for convenience and for the sake of the comparison between the S domain and the Z domain, if we assume now that the controller transfer function is 1 and the actuator transfer function as well is 1, so the closed loop transfer function for the curve block diagram becomes This is the closed loop transfer function in the S domain. Previously, we have obtained the closed loop transfer function in the S or the continuous time domain. However, if a computer is used as a digital controller, then we expect to have some sort of a sampler before the compensator or the digital controller. And for the output of the controller to be fed to the the S domain transfer function, the data has to be reconstructed via a zero order hold, for example. The equivalent transfer function of a zero order hold could be one minus exponential of sampling time S over S. Then this is the data function we have obtained previously. And the output here is the water level. Or HS. Also we have a sensor. For convenience, we can assume that transfer function for the sensor is 1, and so is the digital controller. 
We could also specify the sampling time as 0 0.1 seconds. Using the techniques developed in the previous chapter, we can express the system closed loop transfer function. such where g of z is defined as the z transform of the zero order hold multiplied by the planned transfer function If we replace z e to the power s t, then we end up with this one is for that term, and we multiply the denominator s with the plan transfer function. To find the closed loop discrete transfer function using previous learning techniques, uh, we were able to find the closed loop transfer function. Please refer to the previous chapter for more information or previous videos.
So this is the closed loop transfer function. So the closed loop transfer function in the continuous S domain TS can be shown as such. And the closed loop transfer function in the Z domain can be shown as such. Remember, both of these systems represent the same plant transfer function, if you recall, for the water level tank system, which was found to be The question is, will these two systems, one of which in the S continuous domain and the other in the Z discrete domain behave the same given a certain step input. If we consider the step input R of S equals to a unit step, 1 over S, then the output in this case will be You can either apply a partial fraction or you can apply the final value theorem straight away on the S function. So the final value in this case equals to or alternatively It's clear that the final value is not 1 as the input. So the steady state error exists, and this is expected to be non zero since the type of the system is of type 0. For type 0 systems with a step input, we expect that the steady state error to be finite. If we continue our analysis, with a discrete system, considering the input is a step. Then the output function is Applying partial fractions to the output function C of Z, 
This can be done by removing the Z underneath the C of Z and then applying partial fractions. Then we can multiply the Z back and we get So the DC gain here is when k tends to infinity this term is going to go to 0 and the answer will be 0 0.667 or alternatively limit for z tends to 1 for z minus 1 multiplied by C of Z This also leads to the same answer to that in the S domain. Remember that the sampling time used for us to find the discrete transfer function was 0 0.1 second. We will use MATLAB in order to show some of the effects of the sampling time on the system response. Also note that the time constant for the transfer function in the continuous S domain equals to 1 over 6. The rule of thumb often used for selecting the sample rates is that a rate of at least 5 samples per time constant is a good first choice. This means the sampling time should not be greater than the time constant divided by around 5 samples for that time constant equals to Please note that even the DC gain of the discrete domain is the same as that of a continuous domain. The transient response may differ and this is due to the sampling time. We will see this later on in MATLAB.